Vintage 2020. Uh, for for us here at the Bone Line, uh, it'll be remembered as uh, the vintage that nearly didn't happen. Um, and it's looking back at it now, uh, we're full of uh, gratitude um, that that we got to the you know we got all our fruit in. Um, so the the buds sort of woke up uh, earlier than they have done uh, for for a decade. Um, so they sort of dragged the season into early spring, which is danger territory for us with frost. But uh, October was mild and kind, um, and the vines just slowly woke up and stretched the shoots. Uh, and then um, November came in and just bowled all that mild weather out into the Pacific, and uh, it was the hottest November uh, on record. So going back 30 years, it was hot and it was windy. Uh, and that really got uh, the vines moving. Uh, and it was a bit of a double-edged sword where we have fantastic flowering, which um, set up the, the crop really well. But at the same time, it really did uh, dry out the um, sort of winter buffer of, of rain, of, of uh, water in the, in the terrace soils here. Um, so then irrigation was the word on everyone's uh, lips. And... Uh, yeah, we, we sort of uh, went through a six-week period uh, after Christmas of uh, only having two and a half mils of rain. And for the first time, we were actually um, having to really ration our irrigation water just to keep the, the canopies green. And, you know, by the end of that period, we had lost um, some canopies in the in the boniest parts of the vineyard and the edges Um but um, luckily we got some rain in the headwaters um, in late of February and that sort of kept us going. And then uh, by sort of mid-March, which um, surprisingly March was uh, one of the co coldest month, uh, the coldest March since 2012. So um, that sort of gave the vines a break and just sort of slowed, put a little bit of a halt to the rate that things were ripening, which proved to be quite very useful um, as, you know, the cloud of sort of uh, uncertainty uh, crept in as COVID-19 um, swept through the country. Uh, we were taking it day by day um, after about a week of picking and, yeah, we were just sort of expecting to have to down tools at any point. So it was a very stressful time. But for us here, uh, we knew one thing that, the uh, we're small and the quality has to be uh, right up there or there's no point in doing it so there was no option of just getting a getting a big crew of pickers or uh, a machine to pick it all all at once we had to do it our way and the way we always do it to um, sort of keep the quality and um, make something we're proud of um, so once the government restrictions came in we um, we were just so grateful that we could carry on our our passion and what we love to do. Um, so we took it really seriously, um, and we knew this, you know, the stakes involved. So um, it all really um, panned out well. We had a small picking crew, and we could, over a three week period that um, followed, we could we basically just chipped away at the vineyard, uh, and that early start to the year. Um, to the season really proved pivotal um, in bringing the maturity forward. It sort of mitigated the drought, put the worst of the drought in the sort of later ripening period of the fruit, which helped, which dropped the acid out, um, which we don't often see uh, to, you know, to, to the point where um, we weren't waiting on acid uh, to pick. And it sort of gave us beautiful um, uh, colour and tannin in the skins and flavour. So um, after that three-week period uh, of sort of going through the, uh, the Pinot, Chardonnay, Riesling and Sauvignon, uh, we had a, our usual break uh, in picking where we finished off the Pinot. And at the end of, of April, uh, we picked our Cabernets. So they were beautiful blue, black in colour and soft uh, to touch. Uh, and yeah, we... Um, that was the end of, of, of the picking. Um, and then in the winery, um, often 
you know, as a wine from a winemaker's perspective, uh, a great vintage is is not just making great wine. It's a year where you achieve what you set out to achieve, and that might be um, having, you know, learning and doing trials and different things and with the wines and start steering things in stylistic directions. And looking back now at what we were able to achieve, particularly with Sauvignon and Pinot Noir this year, um, I'm truly excited at the diversity of batches we have in the winery to put together and hopefully what we're going to take away from it for future wines. And then conversely, the Chardonnay and the Riesling, our approach was um, to sort of use what we had learned uh, in previous vintages and uh, it felt quite effortless in the end uh, and just fell into place and, and they're looking really great as well. Um, yeah, so the, I think the wines, the, they have a real vibrancy to them in combination with true concentration, which we don't see every year. And I think that will be another hallmark of the vintage is that, um, you know, that those two together um, and particularly in Pinot Noir. Um, but then, yeah, we've got the Cabernet Franc in vat now fermenting and that's showing all the traits of of an old friend that we um, was often, you know, a, a favourite here. And, um, and yeah, so we're, we're holding high hopes for the Cabernet Franc as well. So, um, yeah, at the moment it's um, the... It's a sort of vintage to um, feel grateful and um, a lot of relief for having gotten through and hopefully, uh, you know, there, it will be something to celebrate in future because it is very worthy of celebrating.